Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Dennis Duke is my name. If you're new here, please make it a point to subscribe. We've driven roughly around 250 kilometers just to bring you one of those farmers that is very enterprising. And like I told you, we shall be sharing stories not just from the Duke's farm, but from different farms. And today we have uh, a lady that I so much ad admire in terms of what she has done, the kind of work, the kind of inspiration she has given this nation. Well, she deserves a shout out. And that's why we decided to actually pay her a visit today so that she can actually inspire some of you that are out there and, well, still wondering whether you should start goat farming or not. And with me is Grace Voji. Hi, Hi Grace. How, How are, you? are you? I'm fine. How are you? You're welcome to Boji Farms. Thank you. I'm super excited to finally be talking to you. You're you know, welcome. It has, it has been, you know, a hassle <laughs> here and there. I the know. fact that you're a busy person, yeah. uh, busy with your goats. How, how are the goats, first of all? The goats are doing fine. I just love everything about goats. Okay. You've, you've really done quite exceptional in the, in the field of farming. Mm. But let's, let's, let's roll it back. Mm. We want to understand from when does somebody start and what should their projection be, depending on whichever goal they will have chosen, mm. to reach where you are today. Okay. Mm. So somebody out there watching us who wants to start good farming, I would still stick to the number one thing, seek for knowledge. Don't jump into this thing. You'll burn all your money and you will regret this forever. Good farming ends, but I don't want to push you into it mm. without you getting further knowledge. So first seek for knowledge. And I'm assuming with the knowledge, you also have the passion at least to push you through those tough times when things are not moving on well. Because sometimes with farming, you require that passion. That passion will take you through those bad times. So after the knowledge, you need to acquire land. Uh, minimally, one acre would be enough. Minimum one acre and above, you can still rear goods. Then after you have acquired land, you need the uh, capital. Capital, I would say even with one million, as long as you have the land. But you don't have to have a fancy goat house because all the money will be eaten in a fancy house. Use the locally available materials to construct your goat pen. What do I mean by the locally available materials? At your farm, you may be having grass. You may be having uh, uh, branches. You may be having matundubali stapolin. You may be having uh, bisagazi, those are lead grass. Mm -hmm. All that can be used to thatch your house. And then you get an anthill. If you don't have an anthill, don't kill yourself to eat. Like where I'm seated here, this is an anthill. If you don't have an anthill, look for a place in your land where the area is slanting, where water does not log. So that you put your house, your simple house there. Also, when you are putting up uh, infrastructure at the farm, put into consideration the house where your workers are going to stay or even yourself because you not stay under a tree after you have uh, put all those those into consideration start stocking your goods i would advise somebody stocking goods don't go to markets to stock your goods why when you go to markets i for one i can go to the market and buy the goods because i have the experience i know what to do i know how to quarantine those goods but a person beginning I wouldn't advise you to go to the market to stock your breeding goats. Why? Usually in those markets, most of those goats that end up in the markets, they are rejects. Chances are very minimal for you getting a good goat with no defects. Usually, if they are to sell goats, they are, if they are to send goats to the market, these are goats that come either they over, they over miscarry, or when they give birth, they don't want to breastfeed their, their kids all they have been sickly and they have been on a longer time with treatment so because we want to sell them off we send them to the market and you find nice looking goats in the market you buy them you also risk introducing infections new infections from your farm if you get goats from the from the market and then also some of the things you should plan for in the first six months of your starting make sure the salaries of your workers are covered for because you're not going to start earning from goods in the first six months. The salaries are covered for and they are food. One mistake I used to make, uh, I talk so much about the mistakes because I, want, I don't want others to, make them. to go through what I went through. Sure. One mistake I used to have in, uh, when I was, uh, just started was to 
pay the workers and then also give, give them money to buy their own food. After two weeks, they would have no food. So that I would not expect any farmer. Make sure your workers, either if you cannot grow food at the farm, mm. make sure you buy them food. Weekly. No, you can do it monthly then. Mm. Like posh, most people, most workers prefer fresh and beans. Mm. If you can afford to have a sweet potato, mm. Irish, have it like here, we have a variety of foods. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm. So don't give workers money to buy their own food. True. They will eat 25 kilos of posh within one week. <laughs> they are wasteful. Actually, they even think of selling it to others. Mm. So I wouldn't expect someone to go through the same mistakes. And then some other thing, uh, when I was also starting, I also encourage, I usually encourage farmers to put up small, small things. And I, no, I'm not saying put up many projects, mm. like uh, chicken mm. at the farm. Mm. Why? Our youth, their are, they are time to concentrate is limited, especially when they are broke. And there are times when they want something like money. There are issues usually rotate between 20,000 to 15,000. I want to buy a car radio. Mm. I want to buy a, a, a charger for my phone. That is 10,000. Mm. But they don't have money at that time. Mm. So you put up chicken at the farm that, yes, yeah, sometimes they may ask you, sometimes they may not ask you. So if your chicken goes of 10, 15,000, don't complain much. You have put it there. Mm. You know you are solving the bigger issue of no. where, where somebody could have gotten to steal your goat of 500,000. Mm. So let them take the chicken of 15,000. Mm. Are we together? Mm. So I would encourage somebody to put in those small, small things. Actually, what I've also realized from my own experience, when you lower the gap where your workers steal from, mm. the, there is a high staff turnover. I don't know if you have experienced that or you have Please not. explain that. When you lower the chances, when you tighten the news, mm, where, where somebody can steal, steal from you, mm. they usually run very fast. Oh. So don't tighten everything because you want them. Mm, you they want you, but you also want them. There are some things you have to let go. Just let go. Let go. But just know, if it is done concurrently, just know that guy is just a thief. You mm, get it. Mm. Just let get him to, go. Get rid yeah. Of them. Like I have a friend in. I uh, have a friend in. Um, in a thicker, mm. he has a farm and he installed cameras everywhere. Mm. And what happened? Workers started living just like that. So, these are some of the things. No, but there is no way they are going exact, to steal that person. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You are still telling us of the things that somebody needs to uh, have before to you start said a farm. At least they need to have food for six months, mm -hmm. uh, a place where the. What else? A place where they stay, mm -hmm. and then you need to stock mm -hmm. a drug kit okay. to take you through. But when you are stocking this drug kit, most of us are lay farmers. We have no knowledge about these drugs. Mm -hmm. Please get in touch with your DVO mm -hmm. if you cannot uh, if you cannot afford a vet. DVO is a district district veterinary officer. officer. Mm -hmm. If you cannot afford a vet at your farm. Consult the DVO. The DVO will give you a list of the things to have. Why? When you stock these drugs at your farm, mm. the cost of production at your farm lowers. Why? Most of, I'm not trying to underplay the role of the vets at the farm, mm. but sometimes the cost of the vets is really high. Mm. A vet may come and gives you a bid of 300,000. You have a stock of uh, 1 million. You are paying already 300,000. So already the profit is of done. that whole time is done. Mm -hmm. So it would be best you stock your own drugs, but use them sparingly in consultation with somebody who is qualified, like uh, an animal specialist, animal husbandry specialist, mm. or a veterinary officer mm. to guide you. So let's try to down, down, go deep down into this. Mm. Uh, what sort of uh, goat farming cost makes because everything has an economic sense to eat. Mm. If I'm advising somebody to start uh, rabbit farming, mm. for for rabbits, no, I would advise somebody like on a commercial basis, mm. roughly around ten rabbits. Mm -hmm. It makes a good commercial sense. What for is goats, it in when it comes to goats? For goats, it would uh, it would make a commercial sense with fifty goats. Why? Mm. When you start with fifty goats, I assume you started with fifty goats like in January, mm -hmm. in June. Because I told you the gestation is five months. In June, you should be expecting between 50 to 60 kids. So you're already, with your 50 mothers plus 50 kids, you're already having 100 goats. Mm -hmm. So even when you are constructing the house, you have started with 50 goats, make sure you construct a goat house 
that, that I can, can accommodate, accommodate exactly. <laughs> the extra number exactly. that will come in within yeah. six months. Mm. Okay. But now the challenge mm. is to keep those kids from dying, the mortality. That is what most farmers experience. Okay. The mortality of kids. Before we go to the mortality of kids, mm. let's first handle this cost of, of, of starting. You said 50 uh, goats is a good number. Mm. It makes a commercial sense. Mm. So what is the simplest basic cost of starting a 50 uh, goat, uh, goat farm. Okay. Mm. The 50, you make sure you have a goat house for them. Okay. That is Which one. could cost roughly around how much? Uh, for 50 goats, roughly roughly three, 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 three million, 3.5. They are not raised. They're just... Um, uh, this Actually, this may cost less like 1 million. Mm. Because for us here, we had the timber. Mm -hmm. It's only the, ro the, iron, the iron sheets and the, the nails we bought. So mm -hmm. it may cost less. Mm -hmm. So if it is raised between 3 to 3.5, mm -hmm. depending on where you buy your wood from, yes. you get it. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, what other question had you asked? Uh, like, I want you to maybe give us a small breakdown of, okay, if you're okay. to start with 50, mm -hmm. you'll need a house or a structure that mm -hmm. could accommodate them, which is, you've said, roughly mm -hmm. around 3.5. 5 million shillings. Mm, mm, mm. What else? The, 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 the uh, cost stock? of uh, got, uh, buying uh, 10, uh, 50 goats may take you around uh, 10 million mm. if you are starting with the local goats. Mm -hmm. And I would always advise anybody starting there, you mm. start with the local goats. Okay. They give you room to make mistakes. They give you room to understand what goat farming is all about. Mm. Uh, and then you also need to buy a mail. Okay. The least cost of a mail is between 500,000, mm. even up to five, 6 million. Mm. But a person starting, I wouldn't advise you to buy a mail of 6 million. Mm. Start with 500 mm. to 1 million. Don't go above that. Let's go to 1 million. Let's okay. give it 1 million. 1 million. million. Mm. And then the cost of drugs, usually they may cost around uh, 300,000, mm. plus the tools need, needed, mm. like... Uh, drug, drug okay. uh, antibiotics, mm -hmm. tagging machines, mm -hmm. there's a spray pump, mm -hmm. there's also an acaricide to spray the goat, so you need around 350. Okay, let's and put then that the at salary. 500 maybe for the drugs and all those kits. Okay, mm. and then also the salary, minimum, minimum a salary of a, a, go, a goat worker who is herding goats would be around between 100 to 150. Okay. So depending how you negotiate, then also include their food. Okay. So roughly take it that one person per month can take 150, inclusive of food and other expenses. Mm. Yeah. Is that all? Mm. Okay. That's all. That uh, those are the you main don't need costs. to buy foods for the goats. Maybe like we buy pellets for, 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 for rabbits. Uh, it all depends if you're on free range. Mm. Free range here, I'm not buying any food. Okay. But if you are zero grazing. zero grazing, that is another scenario. So I would advise if you are in zero grazing, before you start, first plan for the food of the goats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also a person zero grazing, mm -hmm. I wouldn't advise you to start with local goats. It will not make economic sense because they take longer mm -hmm. to grow and they will eat into all your profit mm -hmm. because they are taking longer to grow. So I would advise you to start with the uh, crosses all purely exotic goats. Okay. Mm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, after this discussion, I hope you now know how much we are looking at. Uh, it's roughly between, so if you want to start up a goat farm of 50 goats, you need roughly around uh, 15. If you can put it to 16 million, the better. And Grace has advised you that, well, if you have a good number of, you know, acres of land, you can start with uh, local, uh, you know, breeds of uh, goats because they give room for learning. Uh, they are resistant to some of the diseases. Exactly. But if you are doing uh, zero grazing, it makes a lot of economic sense when you start with um, uh, the, the, the Crosses, exotic or exotic, exotic breeds. Mm. And then before you start, please make sure, please make sure, please make sure you plant as many grasses as you can. Because again, you don't want to feed, you don't want the goats to feed in your pockets, directly in your pockets, okay? So I think I needed to recap some of those things for you, our lovely uh, viewers. So let's get deeper. You know, this conversation is getting interested. Mm. So you talked about something also interesting, the kids. Mm. But before you go to the mortality of kids, mm. at what age does a goat, uh, you know, reach maturity, full maturity that, hey, I know, of course, there are different variations when it comes to breeds, mm. but, well, the, the, the best breed here. Maturity as in to, to, to be to able get, to get, to become pregnant, mm -hmm. eight months. Okay. Mm, eight By eight months, months it's ready. Mm. What are 
the best breeds, if you can describe them for us? The best breeds? Because somebody's out there wondering, should mm. I rear the local Movende? Mm. Uh, should I rear the local Mbale breed? Okay. Or the local Karamoja it breed? It's still local. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so somebody's wondering, should I go you know, with boas? Should I go with Kalahari? And if Kalahari or, or the Savannah, I mean, there are different breeds. Okay. Please zero down for somebody. Okay. Let's guide somebody out there. All, all the breeds we have in Uganda are good goats, mm. except for the small East African goats. These are mainly, they are always in Karamoja, Gulu, Palisa. They are tiny goats, uh, brown in color. They are not good for breeding. They don't add on weight very fast. So one of the breeds for a starter would say local goats. As you go on advancing, you can include the exotic breeds. I will not be specific and tell you that this breed is good, this one is not good. I don't want to lie to my viewers. I don't want to lie to the viewers out there. I will, here at the farm, we have the savannas, we have the karahari, we have the boas. But majorly, we are, ma we are majoring in boas. Why? Our nearness to Tanzania, we have a lot of customers from Tanzania. So we sell most of our boas to Tanzania. So this is where I conclude from on this issue, on this topic, that as a farmer, learn first understand what works best for you at your farm which breed will work for you for example a farm i'm going to visit tomorrow in masha in isinjiro he has savannas and he says savannas are doing so well for him you get it mm -hmm. i for one here boas are doing wonders for me you get it mm. so it all depends and the, all the goats actually the boa karahari and savannah they all cost the same thing that even when you came here to buy i want a bowl a karahari a female we shall sell it five hundred thousand. Whether Karahari, Savannah, all Boa, it all costs the same. So there is no difference. It's just the colours. There is a, a question you mentioned. When do, when does somebody expect to earn from goats? Usually, let's look at the gestation period of a goat. Uh, the gestation period of a goat is five months, and you don't expect to sell a goat at five months. Usually, they are young. They are kids. They are vulnerable, so you shouldn't, I wouldn't advise somebody to sell kids. So when should somebody expect to earn from goats? Assuming I've started with my 50 goats. In January, I started with 50 goats. In uh, around June, June, July, I should be expecting another 50, 50, 50 to 60 kids. So I let those kids grow. I let those kids grow up to seven to eight months. Mm -hmm. I can be able to sell them off. All I can be able to, I can be able to sell them off. All I can let them grow and I grow my herd. But also from the manure accumulated at the farm, actually here for us, before my plantation had grown to the stage it is now, I used to sell the goat's manure per bag. I used to sell the bag of 100 kilos. I used to sell it 10,000. So you can still earn. But buyers are not going to find you if you're not marketing yourself. Are you getting? That's true. It's just like telling a blind person you are beautiful. They don't. They have never seen themselves in the mirror. <laughs> so you are marketing yourself, but you are not. You are selling something, but, but nobody. But nobody knows you. Definitely. You get it. So start talking about manure. Mm. Tell people how good manure is. If you are driving, Duke, you are driving to your farm. You want people to buy your rabbit, your rabbit urine. Mm. Start telling people the people you buy pass. Mm. You know. I have, I have rabbit urine. Like exactly, I have That's rabbit true. urine. But it's good. ABC does this and this. If you put, you can even give a bonus. You say, if you mm. give, put this urine, I'm going to give you one jerry can. Do for this free. and this and this for free. You get mm -hmm. it. Now you are starting to market. But the challenge we have in Uganda here, <laughs> somebody starts to farm. Now, mm. Sirika. No, I want to surprise them. I don't want to tell anybody. Mm -hmm. You are killing your market. Every time you keep quiet. I remember when I was just starting. When I used to get these interviews, me, my target market was to market myself. Mm. And right now I've done enough market for my products. There is no single product of mine that people don't know out there. Mm. All over East Africa, people know my products. Why? Because I yap a lot. I yap a lot about my products. <laughs> I'm marketing myself. That's true. You get, my, you get it. Mm. So when you farm something and you keep quiet, people are not going to buy your things. Meaning they Actually, what you're, you, what you're trying to do, mm. you are pushing us who have marketed ourselves better mm. to become broke and buy the things from you and then we come and resell them at a what another at a, at price. price you get the point mm. so learn to market your things as when you start actually prior to starting something i forgot first look for the market for your products before you start 
No nyakatale before you start, look for the market. I'm farming goats. Where is the market for the goats? Start with your neighborhood. I'm farming in Rakai here. Mm. Who are the first people I should be able to sell to goats? Yes. I can sell to the breeders around here. I can sell to people who want to slaughter my goats. Look, go to them, ask them. How much do you, do you buy a goat, a kid of goat's meat? All that information, that is a market analysis. You are making a market analysis prior to investing in goods. You have an idea. You have a well-written analysis of where you're going to sell your products. Okay, if plan A fails, what do I do? I remember here in, uh, there's a time, I think it was called formalin. There's a time of formalin. You know, formalin in uh, goat's meat, I mean in the butchers, they're trying to kill the flies. It's going to kill people. A lot of Uganda stopped eating that meat. And actually, it, was, it later came out that the formalin was not being put on the meat. It was being sprayed on the walls to kill the flies. But there was misinformation. I, for one, I, as, as Boji Farms, I made a killing out of that mess. How? People started asking for my goat's meat. I started slaughtering the goat's meat. I would get some guy who was very good at uh, roasting it. Mm -hmm. I would roast it Bulunji put it in a banana leaf package it and sell it to the people in Kampala. So always look out for those opportunities to market yourself. Look out, I think they call it the grapevine. Mm. Look out for those key areas where you can market yourself. People are in a bar, they are talking about this meat is hard, blah, blah, blah. You know you're farming goats, but you're keeping quiet. Mm. Tell them about how tasty your goats are. You get the point. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, that's, that's all I have you to say You talked about, about something interesting that I picked. Uh, that is quarantine. Mm. How important is quarantine? And what exactly is quarantine? Like, briefly explain to us. Okay. Quarantine is that area it's where you keep your new animals at the farm before you mix them with the main herd. It usually takes between two weeks to one month. It can even take longer depending on the state of the animals they are in. You get it? Like we have just brought in sheep from Kenya. We, have to, we had to quarantine them for a full month. And now they have just come out of the quarantine. Mm. So make sure that quarantine is at least 300. If you don't have enough land, keep it a distance from your animals. Or if you don't have enough land or you don't have enough space, make sure if you have to buy new goats, you can keep it on a rope somewhere, not in your herd. Why do we do that? You prevent you, those animals from outside coming with the new infections, new types of ticks and introducing them to your herd. You get the point. So if you do you, you quarantine, usually what happens in the quarantine, we, we are doing observation. Uh, under observation, we do, we make sure we do warm. If vaccination is necessary, for example, if you have the knowledge about vaccination and where they came from, they were not vaccinated, you can start them on the vaccination. You can also start on uh, regularly spraying them against the sticks because you don't want the new ticks to come to join your, your farm. And also the general treatments as you see them. Some of them may come with a lot of flu. Others may come up, come up with uh, eye infections. Those eye infections can easily be passed on from one goat to the other. So make sure all that taka taka end I've stops been. in the quarantine. Mm. When you see a goat is normal, it's looking fine, it's healthy, Introduced to human heart, but most farmers don't know that. Okay. What happens if the goat doesn't have any of those complications? You still keep it at least for one week okay. or to one to As two you weeks. Monitor. Yeah, and also the best time for every goat farmer out there, mm. even if you have your company and it's burning and you really want to invest, never stock goats in the rainy season. Hey! Yeah. Some of us are wishing uh, no, no, we were no. willing to stock no, now. In the now, rainy like, season, like next week. no, like now it's not. The rain has actually has completely. By failed. rainy season, you mean that rain that rains every single Too day? Too much, like April. Like for us, if it was raining, actually, if it was raining, mm. even this interview would not have gotten. Oh. You get it. What, so what April, is, what is so April, May for mm. like for us, you know, every farm mm. has those unique challenges. With time, with experience, and the number of times you have been farming, mm. you later learn what your farm is all about. What challenges do you face? Mm. Like for one here, you are seeing a bit of our farm is in a valley. Mm. So most of the water from the hills up there mm. may co comes here, actually, it floods. Mm. So because of the flooding, in April and May, you experience a lot of foot rot. Mm. Actually, we have already stocked, stocked enough drugs to take us through April, but we are lucky that it hasn't it has that not started much. raining that much okay so i wouldn't advise anybody 
farming goats mm. to stock or to get new goats in the rainy season. Why? They they take longer to adapt to the new environment you're introducing them to. And two, they come with infections. Actually, most of the infections from goats, they come in the rainy season, like 80%. Mm -hmm. In the dry season, that's why people wonder, the dry season, the goats are looking so nice. We are going to show you our goats, you'll see them. They're looking so nice. Mm -hmm. But in the rainy season, they they shrivel, they become a little bit because they're affected by the rains. Mm -hmm. And why do we think they look so nice in the dry season? They eat less fresh grass. Okay. They eat a little bit of dry grass, which is good for their well-being. So Grace, there's been a discussion that hasn't gotten a solution yet, so we want you to settle it today mm -hmm. about the structures. Somebody's wondering, should I go with uh, the raised structure? Should I go with the ground structure? Okay. Can you settle this discussion for us? <laughs> Uh, the difference between a raised and a, a ground structure, mm. it's all about cost. Okay. Yeah, a ground structure costs less and does not require a lot of much expertise to construct it. Even me, as a lay farmer, I can put the nail and uh, wood together and I have a raised structure. Mm. Uh, and a I have a structure. ground structure. Mm. With a raised structure, the cost implications are really high because you're using a lot of wood, which costs high. And also the number of uh, the nails. You are going to use a lot of nails. And also it requires expertise to construct it. But the difference between a raised and a ground structure is that the ground structure, like where we are stood here now, I put it on a nut hill, it is good for the local goats. The local goats really love it on the ground. There is a way you feel that a god is enjoying the soil mm -hmm. because it's on the what? On the ground. Okay. And then with the raised, raised structure, I strictly use it for the hybrids. I want to keep them looking nice, looking clean. But with the ground pain, you may not be able to afford that cleanliness. Two, the number of infections that come from a ground pain, as compared to the number of uh, infections that come from a raised pain, from the ground pain, the infections are higher. But also in a ground and a raised pain, the infections may be higher, especially if you don't raise your house from the ground, if you make it too level. low, make sure that every goat house, if mm. you had raised it, should be four feet from the ground, four feet from four, four feet from the ground up to the floor. to the floor. So that somebody who is there, who is going to take care of your goats, can be able to bend down with ease mm. and sweep under. But mm. if that person cannot do that, it means you're also ha having, you're like somebody who is having a ground pain. Why is this that? No, no yeah, mutaka. Mutaka. Exactly, that okay. is how it is. Mm. And also, um, what else, apart from the cost, the and also, yeah, the infections, mm. both inf have infections, mm. but the, raised, the ground pain has more infections mm. because it's directed with the soil. Then also, in areas mm. where um, they experience a lot of rains. And flooding. And flooding. Like where we are. Exactly. <laughs> a ground pen should not be good for you. Mm. A raised pen should be good. Mm. And also it is more secure for one to have a raised pen than a ground pen. Secure in the sense? Security. Like security. Mm. Somebody like here, you have seen mine is even open. Mm -hmm. Somebody who comes to steal goats can, f here goats can be accessed very easily. Unlike with a raised pen. Okay. It's not so easy. Okay. Mm. You, we, we understand you do importation of animals. What yes. does it cost one to import, import an animal? Okay. Mm. Uh, it is a costly venture. And I would not lie that I'm doing it single-handedly. What I usually do, I mobilize other farmers all over Uganda, actually all over East Africa, because I've brought uh, goods for Tanzanians. I mobilize them and usually it, it, we usually take uh, three months to mobilize ourselves. And uh, a, co uh, a consignment of 40 animals, it costs between 70 to 75 million to bring them here. So roughly one goat costs between 5.5 .5 to 6 million. So somebody out there watching me say this woman is crazy. How can a goat cost five million? Mm -hmm. And how would I get my money out of that? Mm -hmm. Usually, for a person with a smaller number of goats, I wouldn't advise you to go for a goat of five million. Does not make economic sense. Mm. But a person like me who has a number of goats, what I usually do, like for my first consignment, I brought in pure females, boa females, and also pure boa, boa males. So what I did, I brought them here at the farm and I crossed them. Uh, we, are, we are going to see the, the results of that crossing. Mm -hmm. So I crossed them. So the offsprings 
from that reunion of crossing the hybrids and the indigenous are the ones we sell out to the communities who cannot afford the five million. Are we together? Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. So a person who is like me, who is like Woji, how do I get back my five million? I invested in one male goat. The offsprings, make sure the offsprings born, make sure you reduce on the mortality at the farm. You can be baby, one male can even give you 20 kids and you sell them after six to eight months. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, the market. I know you've said the demand for goats is and there. goat meat, well, goat products is there. Mm. I don't see it. You Where is the it? Market. I don't see the market. <laughs> Where is it? Okay, mm. the market the market is there. Okay, but most uh, most farmers, we take this relaxed mode when we are farming. I implore every farmer out there watching me, please be aggressive marketeers. You'll sell your products. Actually, what I tell most farmers in Uganda, there is no agriculture product that does not have market. We are only taking advantage of the brokers mm. because they are more aggressive than us. You get the point? And they even so, earn more. Exactly. Mm. It feels bad for a broker to earn more than you who is doing the donkey work. Mm -hmm. You get the point? Mm -hmm. So a person out there watching me, goat farming, how do I get money out of it? I've already told you, you start earning from the goat manure. Don't have goat manure out there and you can't and sell it. it. Mm -hmm. If you can't use it at your farm, please sell it off. Inform others, inform that your you neighbors. You are driving to your farm. You never even say hello to your neighbors. Tell them about your goat manure. Are we together? Mm. That is number one. Two, at six to six to ten months, you should have accumulated uh, castrates in Buzizebalaye. Sell them off. You walk into somebody's herd. Somebody has around 20 females, and the rest of the herd are males. What are those males doing in your herd? Sell them off. You are, you are holding yeah. your, your profit in the farm. Sell them off. Where are you going to sell them off? They are butchers in your communities. Ask them. For example, here in my village, the village you came across before you reached the farm, mm. a kilo of goat's meat is uh, 14,000. If, if you are to sell to them, you don't sell that kilo at 14,000 to them. You must leave them some little margin for them to earn a profit. So if you know that kilo is sold at 14,000, give it to them like maybe at uh, 12,000. And make sure if you are to sell goats for slaughter, know the weight of your goats. Average them. This is weighing a maker. How many kilos per each goat? You get it? Mm -hmm. So that you are not taken care, they are not taken advantage of by brokers. So we sell the slaughter goats in kilos. And those who are looking for who are who are who want to sell goats for breeding, for breeding to other farmers. Have good quality goats. Mm -hmm. That even if you don't market yourself, the breeds will market. The you. breeds will market yourself. The breed somebody will come looking for good breeds. Have good quality goats, mm -hmm. and also have a plan when you are going to sell your own animals. Not every time that you sell, a goat will earn your profit if you sell them in many numbers. Mm -hmm. Selling one car goat, it will not earn you anything. Be able to say that every after six months I'm going to be selling 20 animals. You get the point. Mm -hmm. So sell in big numbers and have a plan. And also be, have like, uh, have a plan on how you market your products. All right. Uh, lastly, mm. but not the least, mm. definitely. Mm. Uh, Grace, mm. how do we ensure mm. that uh, we add value? to right. both the goat and their products. Okay. Value addition is what I'm meaning. Mm. Is there a way we can add value yes. to our products? And yes, there is a way we can add value to our products. Mm -hmm. But the challenge we are still facing right now, mm. that few people have started adding value, pro value, value addition mm. to the goats. Okay. Why? The goat population has failed to increase. The goat population, you cannot enter into a contract, say, say I'm going to supply goat's meat, Mm. to maybe a big supermarket on a weekly basis. Maybe I'm going to be supplying 100 kilos you, what? Per, a, week. per week. Mm. You cannot supply because you don't have the meat. Mm. You get the point. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know why there is a high demand for sheep now among the brokers? We are eating sheep meat as goat's meat because the goat meat has failed to what? Wait, so mm. they are selling sheep meat as goat meat. Exactly, they mix it in goat meat. Wow. You get it? Because mm. we have failed to get the population mm. for the goats. 
So value addition, people can add value in any, even the simplest of ways. Like I told you to, during the time of uh, the, other, the other liquid which was being sprayed in butchers, mm -hmm. I, used to, I used to roast my meat. And I would pack it in a banana leaf, send it to Kampala, and I sell it very expensively. You okay. get the point. Okay. Uh, some, some, I've seen one farmer who is starting up like a, an eatery where a piece of meat is going for 4,000 shillings. You get the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen uh, where uh, I've not had, uh, okay, maybe goat's milk. There are farmers who are into goat's milk. They are making cheese. I know of a Kenyan friend. He's making cheese. He's already packaging his milk. He's already in the supermarkets of uh, capital shoppers. Mm -hmm. So we are going step by step. But at the moment, the goat population is still limiting us. Okay. You may find Boji has 500 goats. Mm -hmm. But when you want to sell, uh, buy from her goats, yes. she can only say, I'm only selling 50 goats. Ah, because yeah. that's what is available. Exactly. Last we, are, we hold goats as an asset. We are not looking them at income generating very mm. fast. We okay. hold them as assets. Lastly, mm. your final word mm. to anybody out there who is watching us. Uh, just in one minute, give them a message to inspire them, encourage them. Maybe they started, mm. they're still feeling, oh, will it really make out? Will I really make it uh, to, to grace? Oh, I mean, I just give them, yeah. yes. Actually, a word of encouragement. Yeah, one thing I always uh, tell farmers mm. or people out there watching me. Mm. Uh, actually, me, I'm never contented with where I am. I always want to improve. So, if the best thing I can advise somebody out there starting, start. Whether you're starting with five animals, please start. Don't wait for the good money or the good kickback to come in. Mm. Please start with whatever you have. With whatever you have, start slowly as you search for knowledge as you search for other areas where you can improve on your project, but what matters is you have started. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, one thing I didn't get, how big is your land? Uh, our, it is 200 acres. Okay, 200 acres. Yeah. My farm is seated on two acres. We still have a long <laughs> way to go. But nonetheless, she said start. So I'm starting with my two acres, regardless of what uh, comes my way, we are starting. Miss Grace, how do you manage workers besides how many workers do you have at your farm yeah currently we have 15 workers uh how do we manage workers i usually if it is a good farm i usually from my observation there are certain tribes that do certain works for example goat farming and matoke farming i usually look in the west I will not go to look in uh, another area to look for what. So I always look in those areas and how do I source for them? I usually run adverts. And when they come on the farm, they report with their national IDs. But there are many youth out, of the, out there who don't have national IDs. Make sure you get an LOC letter from them. Uh, uh, from them and also get their immediate relatives' contacts in case of any challenge you may face with them. And also be in touch with their relatives and tell them you have their son or daughter at the farm. And uh, when they reach here, usually before they come, we should have negotiated for the salary. And we have a particular day. And our payment of the salaries, we usually pay at the beginning of the month and the end of the month. Basically, we separate the payments in two groups. We don't pay all the workers at the same time. Why? There is a challenge that has ever happened here. Uh, workers can choose to walk out any day, even when you bind them with an agreement. An agreement will not bind them not to leave. They will leave any day. So what we usually do to avoid such scenarios, we pay our workers, some of them beginning of the month, so that in case somebody by the end of month has not been paid, he will have to wait for that person, for him to be paid. So there is a two weeks lapse between. Like I mentioned, we separated our herds. We have around four herds here of goats. So every herd at the end of the month, the manager and the workers sit and they decide who has performed well. We usually give them a bonus of 40 to 50,000 per person who has worked. We provide them meals. Meals are very key. They may be, they, they have timely meals. We have somebody who cooks for them. We provide them decent accommodation is key. And we also, right now we have not yet gotten uh, entertainment for them, but we had an incident here where we employed somebody and somebody told us, uh, ah, farm, we're bored. Mm -hmm. We are always working, working. So we're thinking of entertaining them so that they are not bored all the time. Okay, maybe like getting a TV. Yeah, we are actually, yeah, we are going to get a TV. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the stealing, usually it is not an easy thing to control among workers. These are people coming from diverse communities with different needs and different mannerisms. But what you can do, you, you can't control how they steal everything, but you can control the number of things that can be stolen. For example, by putting up systems. Like I've told you, I realized we have a number of kids being born and we realized a number of kids were getting lost on the fields. So what we usually do, before the goats get out, we count the numbers have gone out. When they come back, we count the numbers in. So if there is, uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, there is, uh, there are goats missing, we always chase them back to go and look for those goats. Then we also, I told you about the chicken we put here at the farm. Usually, workers' problems are between 15,000 to 20,000. So put up that chicken for them. In case somebody has an emergency, somebody can either ask or even... Some people, you leave room to steal. You can't stop them because you're not always there. So if they steal something of 20,000, it will not bite you so much like and stealing like a, stealing a, a goat of uh, 1 million and they sell it off. Sell 50, exactly. So let them have that time. Actually, what I've also realized from my own experience, when you lower the gap where your workers steal from, mm. the, there is a high staff turnover. I don't know if you have experienced that or you have Please not. explain that. When you lower the chances, when you tighten the news, mm. where, where somebody can steal, steal from you, mm. they usually run very fast. Oh. So don't tighten everything because you want them. Mm. You they want you, but you also want them. There are some things you have to let go. Just let go. In Koke, let go. But just know. If it is done concurrently, just know that guy is just a thief. You mm, get it? Mm. Just let get him to, go. Get yeah. Like I have a friend in uh, I have a friend in uh, in a uh, thicker. Mm. He has a farm and he installed cameras everywhere. Mm. And what happened? Work has started living just like that. So these are some of the things. No, but there is no way they are going exact, to steal that person. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And also provide them, like we give them medication so that we make sure that their salaries are not used for things here at the farm. We give them free medication, we give them the meals, we give them beddings, everything, yeah. So what we usually do when we advertise, assuming we want, we want a, a, a slot for two people at the farm, we usually bring in four people. We give them one month as we are training them on the values, what we expect out of them at the farm. So within one month, two months, we always find out the right people to take on and the right people not to take on. So we always exclude, we leave out the other two that are not fitting into our kind of criteria. The problem of workers is common everywhere. But the advice I would take, some, I would advise, uh, the advice I would give to somebody farming who, are, who is going to farm for the first time, take time to look for workers. If you can, go to the villages and look out for those workers in those particular villages or get somebody reliable to get you those workers and uh, have some backup, backup workers in case somebody decides to leave when you don't expect them to leave. And also when you go to their villages, have contact with the executive, the LOC executive of that area. And also at the farms here, ha be in close touch with the leadership of the farm, the, sorry, the leadership of the village, like the LOC1 executive, uh, the police, in case of any cases that may happen at the farm, they should be the first people to help you at the farm. The farm. Okay, the farmers, mm. you can think of uh, a short-term short -term activity. Like I started with matoke, when I was waiting for the matoke to mature, I put in some beans, so I was able to sell the beans after three months. You can think of uh, vegetable growing. You don't have necessarily to wait for the eight to eight months to one year without earning. Think of something which takes a shorter period for you to earn from it, so that you're able to, what, to earn something, so that you don't run out completely. You quit your job three times. I don't know whether there were three or four or five, <laughs> but several times just uh, to start goat farming. How uh, was that experience? Okay, it was not an easy journey. I was teaching in three universities to start with. And one day I decided enough was enough. And I said I want to follow my passion, which is farming. I came to the farm. I talked to my old, my old mzei, asked for a piece of land. 
obvious like all dads they always come out with all types of risks my dad was like the farm will flood they will steal the goats you'll not manage to come from kampala but i was determined i only told him give me a chance to start then if i fail i'll come back to you and i tell you i failed so i came i started with goat farming okay yeah i know there are a couple of people out there that would love to quit their jobs but they are still wondering should i, I take this kind mm. of risk like what grace Borgi did i mean you're one of a kind you know that yeah. i would never have thought of quitting my job except a few circumstances that led me. Mm. So do you advise somebody to quit their jobs to join goat farming or any other farming venture? I would say yes or yes and no at the same time. One, speaking from my own experience, the first two years were not easy. I was not earning much. Actually, time came when I was a little bit depressed. One of the mistakes I made, and I'm, I'm not shy to talk about it, when I was beginning, I started with goat farming and later I added on matoke, that is banana farming. Why? Both of them, matoke and uh, goats, they are monthly earners. They are, sorry, they are monthly earners, they don't earn on a daily basis. So I had no income to help me run the farm and also sustain my own expenses as a person. So with that, I ended up with uh, with with low basically i was feeling so low because i didn't have money so i would advise a person coming out first make sure there is a stable flow of income mm. or capital enough capital to sustain you in the first two years mm. when you're starting as a farmer okay. that time is very crucial because you need running capital you need to pay salaries you need to pay your own money to, to your salary, your own salary. You need to eat. Your children must go to school. Mm. You can't put all that on hold. You get it. Mm. So I would advise somebody, first analyze and see how am I stepping from this to this. I, for one, I did it because I was really pushed to come out of the universities and start goat farming. Mm. Reason being, I was given a contract in those three universities. Only two universities were giving me money. And the other big university I expected a lot of money from, mm. that money could hardly come. Okay. I was generally like unemployed. Mm. So I chose the hard part. So, but a person who is still employed somewhere there, first make sure those two years of you starting are covered with some money to make you run through that time. So literally you're saying that uh, before they quit, mm. they should try to accumulate some money exactly. that even after quitting can sustain them for roughly around two years. Yeah, okay. and then also maybe what I would also advise, I don't know how they call this so query in English, like uh, you try to be economical. Mm. Some things you have to forego them. Okay. Like I used to drive. Mm. I had to pack my car for some time and I would take a matatu mm. to the farm mm. because I would not afford the fuel, the fuel. Mm. of coming every weekend driving. That is roughly, one, by then it was 150,000 to and from mm. so i could not afford that so some things you have to be to, to try to be economical mm. and uh, what what i did also i um i put up uh, you'll see the makeshift house i put up it was out of water mm. because i realized there are some days i would want to come at the farm and i wouldn't make it back to kampala so, you so i had to look for somewhere where to sleep mm. i came up with a what basically use the little means the little money you have mm. to make things sustainable for you mm. as to when you come to that time when you get enough money. Okay. Like you've seen, I've seen, uh, you'll see the water house, mm. which I started with, mm. but now I'm in a, a roofed yeah, house, which house. is big enough, which mm. is, has everything inside. Okay. So start small till when you reach where you want to be and you'll be happy as a farmer. So by this, um, what should drive somebody? Should it be passion? Should it be the fact that they expect to get money out of uh, this venture? Oh. Out of farming, farming I would expect somebody to, to be driven by passion before money. There are those days when you earn literally nothing. Without passion, you may not be able to move on. Things may not be so easy. So passion should be the number one. The love for that something. That even if you lost five goats today, you'll not give up. You'll still buy other goats and do it again and you learn from the mistakes you did. If my goats died, why did they die? What can I do better 
to improve on what made me fail. So it is all about first is passion mm. before the money comes. Like I told you in the first two years, the money was not there. Actually, I for one, I would uh, go and sit in my banana plantation. It was well kept. It was looking so nice. It was glowing. So I would get my mat and sit in my banana plantation. And I start convincing myself that maybe out of this bunch, I'll get 10,000. And this, I ca start calculating the money as I wait for the money to come. Okay. Mm. Um, somebody would wonder, um, how much are we talking ab about that somebody should save up, mm. maybe that can sustain them for that long? For that long, mm. it depends on what particular project you are going for. That is one. Mm. It also depends the distance from where you are coming from. It also depends on what magnitude. For like I, for one, when I was starting, because I started with around uh, 30 goats, 30 goats. So all I needed was uh, a salary for one person. At that time I was paying 100,000. So I'd make sure at least the first six months I have the 600, the salary plus the food for that person. And also the school fees, depending, that one is a hard question to answer. Mm. It all depends on where somebody's coming from. Yeah. Grace, mm. there is a problem in the country. Mm. I don't know if it's a problem or a challenge, mm. but a lot of us want to retire and go into farming. Mm. And you know the retirement age usually is between 40, 50, 60, 70. Mm. When perhaps somebody is tired and weary and they they are really not very energetic as I am right now. Mm. Why didn't you have to wait until then? Uh, one, the circumstances pushed me. Mm -hmm. Two, I've always had this passion from the, as, as young as seven years. Actually, I thought if I couldn't make it as a farmer, I would be a great criminal lawyer. Okay. So I chose farming because I really loved what I was doing. I'd tried prior to farming, mm. farming goats. I'd farmed goats before. I was working as a sub-county chief somewhere in Sembabwe district. And I used to use somebody's land to farm goats and I'd seen mm. how they were earning, how much money people were making. Mm. By then, the time we were farming goats, we never used to vaccinate. We never used to spray the goats every day. So the money we used to put in was little mm. and we were earning a lot. Unlike now, it's not so much, mm. but can easily sustain somebody if somebody has, started, has, deci has decided to do it full time. Okay. Yeah. So you're trying to say that uh, people shouldn't wait until when they are extremely old. Actually, I wouldn't advocate for that. Reason being, your capacity to be, to be creative mm. lowers down if you are older. Mm. Right now, my phone is my witness. I use so many, I read a lot about goat farming. I use a lot of my phone, which most people cannot do mm. at the older age. Mm. And reason being, there is also room for, risk, for more risks. If you are younger, mm. you can easily adapt, you take well a risk. Unlike when you have gotten your NSSF money mm. and it's all you have, you are investing in goats <laughs> and all the goats die at one, chances mm. of you dying mm. are very high. Okay. But at my age, if I invested something, like um, last season, I invested in uh, 10 acres of Irish potatoes and uh, they yeah. all failed to come out. Mm. But I've planted, you have seen, I've planted new matoke there. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving up because I'm, I still have room to make more mistakes. Mm. Unlike somebody who is already old, okay. it's not good. You talked about something that is very interesting. Mm. Government recently lowered uh, the average age of somebody getting uh, their is it NSSF money. Mm. And, and I know a lot of people who are out there, you know, running up to get this money. Is it a good thing to invest in agriculture and mm. particularly in good farming? Okay, it mm. is good. Mm. At the same time, it's also bad. It, all, it also depends where you're getting from. You're make, you're, you're, have you done enough research about what you're going to invest in? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have enough expertise? Do you have enough knowledge about what you're going to invest in? So I wouldn't stop somebody from investing in goods. Mm -hmm. But first understand, Duke, I've had the scenarios where you supply somebody goods at the farm. Mm -hmm. When you supply them goods and uh, they call you, mm -hmm. they say, Madam, my goat has flu. When is the gestation period of a goat? You literally see somebody who has no idea about what he or she is going into. You get it? Mm. So to avoid all that, before you invest in something, please seek for knowledge. How do you seek for that knowledge? Visit, visit experienced farmers. Don't be afraid to what? To move long distances. Mm. I always tell people when I was starting goat farming, I 
took a bus because I could not have money for an air ticket. Right now I can afford an air ticket. But before, I never used to afford an air ticket. So I took a bus to Naivasha to check out the goats in Naivasha. How are they doing it? How are they looking after 1,000 goats? I want to have 300 goats. How am I going to make it? So don't be afraid to search for knowledge. Use this phone to help you as a farmer. Don't use it for only WhatsApp and Facebook and also check out beautiful pictures of people. No, use it in a way that is going to help you as a farmer. Ask questions. And one of the mistakes what I've realized with farmers, what they do, instead of asking the real experienced farmers, people go to marketeers. A marketeer will, sell, will tell you what they want, to, to, they want you to hear because they want to sell to you something. So go to somebody with experience. You want to buy rabbits. You want to start rabbit farming. Mm -hmm. Go Come and to visit Duke's Duke. Farm. Go to far, with Duke's farm and learn about rabbits. Yes. Instead of going to somebody who is marketing uh, rabbits with no idea how that rabbit came out to be at that farm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying it's a good idea investing your NSSF money and then at the same time it may not be a good idea. What I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. First half, prior to getting that money, mm -hmm. it's just like getting a loan from the bank. Mm -hmm. Before you get a loan, have a clear outline of what you're going to use that money for. Don't first get the money, no mm -hmm. and then you plan for it. It does not make sense. Mm -hmm. You are going to suffocate in debts. You are going to burn all your money in no time. First plan and say, if I'm to construct a goat house, it should not exceed seven million. If I'm to invest in my stock of goats, they should be at least uh, 10 to 15 million. But because some people don't uh, interact with others, you find somebody has constructed a goat house of 17.5 million. You get it. Mm. And he's putting goats of 1 million in the goat house. So that means he didn't do thorough research. Mm. You walk into somebody's farm, somebody has a farmer's of drugs. Because that person is using marketeers, mm. instead of using professional vets to help him stock their farms at the farm. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of this session. My name is Dennis Duke Wonyala. I have been chatting with Grace Boji, very enterprising farmer located uh, on the periphery of Uganda and Tanzania after Rakai. What's the exact this, uh, place here? It's called Bulanga yes, in Chivanda Sub County. In Bulanga in Chivanda Sub County. Mm. So please, for those of you who want to come and learn, she has a couple of you know packages. You can call her, you can uh, you know WhatsApp her on those numbers on the screen so that you come learn. The first thing you can do before you join farming or anything is to learn. First, start by learning because she emphasized that if you don't, you are going to make mistakes. So, you've been an exciting uh, person to talk to. I hope you didn't have any challenges with no, me. No, thank you so much. Dear. Kali, goodbye. We love you. God. Ah. God. God. Mutawala wange tava doe yali food dance ku yali kunyuza ku kumala wiki. You open. Ah ah, they are harmless. I tell him again, she good enough
This is Boa. Bye. <laughs> 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 